Hello everyone out there in uh, YouTube land. Uh, and X, that's right, X as well, uh, formerly known as Twitter. Welcome back to Diego Knows. I, of course, am Diego. And today we're going to continue uh, to talk about Boomerang. That's right, Boomerang, that movie from 1992. It's a great movie. I love this movie. I decided that, uh, you know, after uh, reviewing fucking Barbie, which I'm still confused about, even though I made like, what, 18 fucking videos on that. I'm still fucking confused as to what that movie was about. Okay. And it made so much fucking money. I mean, this year. It's the number one movie of fucking 2023, that's for sure. Okay. Um, after I reviewed that, of course, we reviewed it and just like crap, you know, because I've already reviewed every single episode of fucking Sex in the City on this channel here. And I reviewed last season's fucking bullshit and just like crap season one. Okay. And that fucking abortion of a show. All right. Uh, and then I, I started review, reviewing uh, chick flicks, okay? The ones that you like. All right, and uh, every once in a while, I decide that uh, for fun, for something a little different, I'm gonna review uh, uh, chick flicks that I like and uh, chick flicks for guys. Yeah, that's another category there, chick flicks for guys. Now, the last video I did, uh, chick flicks for guys, the movie I reviewed was um, High Fidelity. Okay, now High Fidelity is a guy, movie. it's a chick flick movie, uh, but it's for guys, okay? And what I mean by that is it deals with all the tropes that all the chick flicks do, okay? You got the girl, you know, who's in her early 30s, you know, professional, you know, working at the fucking, her way up the corporate ladder, okay? She's successful, she's all these fucking things, she's smart, she's independent, she doesn't need a man, but she wants a man. Okay, and then all of a sudden some fucking Prince Charming motherfucker with a shitload of money, rip dabs, fucking square jaw, you know, fucking uh, billions of dollars in his fucking bank account, you know, and he buys his clothes are all fucking designer and shit, you know, he fucking falls in love with her, why? Because uh, she's got spunk and moxie and all the other fucking shit that uh, real, realistically men don't give a fucking crap about, uh, and they end up falling in love at the end, that kind of shit, you know. He chases after her in the rain and shit at the end, you know. It's a typical fucking shit uh, formula, you know. Meg Ryan's made like 600 of these movies, so it's Julia Roberts. It's the same fucking shit over and over again. Uh, but the chick flicks are always deal, uh, specifically the rom-coms, they always deal with the girl's feelings. How does she feel about the guy? It's all about the feelings. It's never about whether or not the guy is good for her, okay? Uh, chick flicks don't give a shit about that because women don't give a shit about that. They really don't, okay? For the most part, they don't. I know there's a few of you out there that do, okay? But for the most part, it doesn't fucking matter. Uh, uh, <laughs> this guy has fucking got a criminal record. It doesn't fucking matter if this guy, you know, has uh, has got fucking six kids from fucking five different girls. It doesn't fucking matter. Does he, does he, does he turn you on, Okay? Does it make you feel good? You see what I mean? Uh, does he shock you and surprise you with his wit, his charm? Okay, that's all that fucking matters, okay? She'll fucking, yeah, she'll, she'll leave her fucking husband for you, absolutely. Okay, that's, that's typically what, how, how it's really like. Well, what they decided to do in this movie here is to do the guy's point of view, okay, the romantic feelings from the man's point of view for a change. And not only that, but they're going to give you uh, that asshole man that I just mentioned. He's going to be the main character. Okay, because Marcus, Marcus Grant, that's Eddie Murphy's character, is an asshole. He is an asshole. He, he's a total asshole. But he's charming, so it doesn't fucking matter. It doesn't fucking matter what he does. That, he, that he's a fucking, uh, he's a serial liar. He's a manipulator. Okay, he even lies to his friends. Okay, he's full of himself. Okay, he brags about all the shit that he fucking does. Okay? Uh, and, uh, you know, he's, he's basically, he's one of those guys. Okay? But he's the main character. So we got to root for him. Okay? Now, real, he's rich, he's charming, he's funny, I mean, he's Eddie Murphy, okay, he's funny, he's charming, he's young, he's only 31 in this movie, you know, um, he's well-dressed, you know, he wears expensive clothes, I mean, expensive watches, he has a beautiful fucking bachelor pad, he knows how to fucking cook, he plays R&B music and shit, he jams, you know, he's very comfortable around women, you know, and, and he's very well-respected in his high fucking paying job. Okay, everybody knows who he is. Everyone smiles at him. Everyone says hello to him. You know, the guys all there that, that, that work with them look up to him because he's above them all. And the girls that all work there, they all want to fuck him. Okay, because he's the guy. He's the Mac Daddy. You know, like he says, okay. Now, typically, you're, most men are not like this, ladies. We're not. And you know we're not. Okay. Most of us are happy just to find an average looking girl that's fucking be honest, you know, and, and, and take, you know, and have kids with us and shit, you know, and, and you know, someone that is going to love us as much as we love them. Because if we love them, we're going to do whatever we can 
for them. Okay, we're going to give them a house. We're going to fucking make sure the bills are paid. We're going to take care of her. Okay, because it's built into our nature to do that, to take care of women. All right? Take care of your family. Okay, that's what's built into us. Okay, at least it has been. That's starting to change now. That's starting to change now. Okay, but back when this movie came out in 1982, it was still that way. Okay, uh, the, the, the progressive movement hadn't gotten as far as it's gotten now. Now it's fucking just ridiculous. Okay, guys don't want to fucking work. They don't want to go to fucking college. They don't want to have fucking kids. They sure as fuck don't want to get married. Okay? Uh, women want, want all these fucking things, but they don't want to have fucking kids because that's going to slow down their career. You know? Uh, and people get married like, like it's fucking, like it's nothing. Like it's just a recreation. You try it on, you don't like it, you fucking get divorced. You take all this fucking money, you marry somebody else. Okay? Well, this whole fucking bullshit thing that's going on, it's been going on. Ever since fucking you got no fault divorce was signed into law by Ronald Reagan, ever since that happened, uh, you know the marriage the marriage rates have gone down. The the, the divorce rates have skyrocketed, you know, uh, and and, uh, and and nobody's getting married. Okay, and now it's even worse. Now guys don't even want to get married. See, at least 10, 15 years ago, twenty years ago, guys still wanted. They still believe the bullshit. You know, you know your your mission in life is a fucking, you know. Go to school, get a professional job, okay, get married, okay, start a family, take your buy a house, all that kind of fucking shit. That was the that was the thing back 20, 30 years ago. Okay, it's not anymore. It's not. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it is not that way anymore. Okay, and guys are waking up. They're waking up to this shit, okay? And let me tell you something, my own personal experience, I've never been divorced. Thank God, I have never been divorced, all right? But let me tell you something, okay? You've probably heard this saying before, okay? The smart man learns from his mistakes. That is true. A smart man learns learns from his mistakes. Absolutely correct. But a wise man learns from the mistakes of others. Okay? And the men are starting to wise up. Sorry, ladies. They're starting to wise up, okay? You can't... You know, this, this old feminist thing can't keep cutting off our balls over and over again before the guys just be like, Hey, wait a minute. You know what? I don't think we're going to go this way anymore. Every time we go there, our balls get cut off. I think we're going to go a different way. I think we're going to do something else, okay? <laughs> that, all that money I would have spent on, on a wife and kids, I think I'm going to spend it um, uh, going to fucking Thailand, okay? Vacationing in Phuket, Thailand, and getting fucking laid out the ass <laughs> instead, okay? By, 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 by some hot-ass bitches that aren't going to talk back to me. <laughs> okay? Well, it's true. I'm sorry, but it's true, okay? It's true, all right? Um, so uh, this thing needs to change. It really does, man. I don't want to live in this kind of world. Where romance is fucking dead. Yeah, it's dead. Romance is fucking dead, ladies. It's dead. Okay? In case you haven't noticed, okay? And for those of you that are thinking about fucking, I don't know, fucking Justin Bieber or, whoever the hot, or Harry Styles, whoever the fucking hot guy is right now. Okay? He doesn't fucking believe in romance. He just says that shit to fucking sell magazines to get clicks. Okay? That's the fucking truth. Okay? So, no, no. It, it's bullshit. It doesn't fucking exist. All right? It doesn't fucking exist. Okay? Today, I mean, in 2023, if you're a guy, a young man, and you buy flowers to give to a girl on a date, you're going to get fucking laughed at. You're going to get fucking laughed at by the girls, okay? That shit doesn't fucking happen anymore, all right? I'm sorry, but it's, it's gone. It's done. Okay, look at nightclubs. Nobody's going to nightclubs anymore. Why, why should they? There's just a bunch of fucking skeezers there, okay? Just all, all, all they want to do is fucking go into VIP. Do you have enough money to get into VIP? To buy, to buy bottles of champagne all fucking night? The 300 bucks a pop? To sit in VIP, do you have that kind of money? You don't think they're gonna fucking talk to you, okay? And why would you want to be with them, dude? They're fucking, they've got AIDS all over them, man. Jesus Christ, why the fuck would you want to hang out with them anyway? You see what I mean? It's just a fucking, it's just fucked up. It's fucked up, okay? I mean, everyone fucking dates through this. This is how everybody dates today, okay? This is how you meet people, okay? You, you figure all that shit out on here, okay? And then you fucking meet up and you fucking. You know, you, you you take care of business and then you fucking say goodbye to each other. Okay, that, that's how it's done today. But Marcus Graham, that's uh, Eddie Murphy's character, was ahead of the curve because he was doing that shit back in 1992, like he does in this movie. All right. Now, like I said before, I love this movie. Uh, but it's very dated. Uh, but even though it's dated as far as like the whole romance thing, Marcus is very romantic. He talks about romance. He's I'm all about the flowers. I'm all about the chocolate. I'm all about fucking taking the girl to the theater, taking her to a nice restaurant, the wine, cooking for her. That's what he fucking says. But the truth is, he says that shit because women watch this movie want to hear that shit. Okay, but realistically, he doesn't need to do any of that shit. Like, he really doesn't, okay? He doesn't give a shit about flowers. I mean, he, he has people that do that for him. 
Okay, he, he tells the secretary, hey, hey, send a, send a fucking uh, Valentine's card to this girl, this girl, this girl, and this girl. And send some flowers to this girl. Okay, he has, a, he has a, a secretary that does that shit for him. Okay, he doesn't give a fuck. All right. Uh, no, no, the women come to him. Okay, he, he's at a level where women come to him. Most guys are not at that level. Okay, most guys are not at that level. I know some of you women out there think that you're so fucking hot. You get hit on by guys all the fucking time. And you do. I'm sure you do. Some of you out there are super fucking great looking. You're going to get hit on by guys for a while. At least until you get into your 30s and shit. Okay, it's going to slow down. But let me tell you something, ladies. Okay, guys like Marcus Graham in this movie. Okay, there's there's like may, this many of them in the world. Okay. Okay, how many, how many of you are, think you're going to get that guy? You know how many fucking super drop dead gorgeous fucking women there are in the world? These high value women, there's like fucking this many. Like this fucking many, okay? And all of you are competing for these guys, okay? So what the fuck? Do you think he's gonna he's gonna fall in love with any of you? No, he's not. Why why would he? Why would he want to? Why buy the cow when the milk is free? Okay? And Marcus Graham is one of those guys. Okay? So right there you've got to, you know, you know turn your brain off. And accept the fact that Marcus, despite the fact that he's a player, that's all he do, really does, okay, is he fucks a lot of girls. He knows how to talk. He knows how to flirt. He knows how to do all that shit and manipulate them because he lies, okay? Uh, a guy like this, okay, we're supposed to feel sorry for her, sorry for him when, he, when his heart gets broken, okay? No, we're not. We're not, okay? The reason the movie wants you to feel sorry for him is because the women in the movie are going to feel sorry for him, okay? Because they already like him. And now here's this girl, this disgusting, terrible skeezer who fucking breaks his heart. Okay, and now we want him. We want him to get that good girl. A girl that's not going to break his heart like, like Jacqueline did. No, she's got to get with Angela. Angela's a sweet, pretty one, even though she fucking wears burl, uh, fucking uh, cashmere fucking garbage bags to work. That's her. Those are her outfits until they start dating. Then she starts dressing sexy. But, you know, despite that, she's such a nice girl and sweet and kind and innocent and doesn't curse and, aww, you know, like that. Okay, like a guy like him deserves a girl like that. No, he doesn't, but unfortunately... Unfortunately, uh, yeah, back then in the 90s or so, I would say, I would definitely say so. The guys, um, the, the, the sweet girls, the girls that were sweet and honest and pretty and just kind and all that, they always went for the guys that were fucking assholes. They always did. They always did. They thought they were special, okay? Uh, because the guys, the, the guys that are assholes, well, they can attract a lot of women. So, of course, some of the women they're going to attract are going to be really nice girls, really sweet, caring, lovable, honest girls, Okay, so of course you're gonna be attracted to that guy. All the other girls are too. You see what I mean? Girls don't give a shit about that stuff. Okay, what they give a shit about is what turns them on. Okay, they're gonna be attracted to what turns them on. I don't care if you're a fucking, if you're a goddamn fucking five dollar bus stop skank. Okay, uh, selling your fucking pussy. Okay, or if you're a fucking, um, you know, a sweet nice girl virgin. You know, a 22 year old rocking body virgin. You know, it doesn't matter. They're, they're still going to go for the same guy. Okay. You see what I mean? It doesn't fucking matter. Okay. <laughs> women will be women. All right. It doesn't matter how good you are. Okay. The point is, do you turn her on? Are you attractive? And do you turn her on? Can you hold her interest? Okay. Are you a fucking dancing monkey? Okay. Does, do, you, do you make her laugh in a good way? Do you entertain her? Okay. Do you make her feel special? Okay. Does she, is she excited whenever she's around you? Okay. It doesn't matter whether you're a fucking serial killer or whether you fucking work at McDonald's, doesn't fucking matter. If you can do that for a girl, she will fucking stay with you, okay? Unfortunately, most guys don't appreciate being fucking dancing monkeys, okay? We don't appreciate that, all right? And so, hence, because we know that she's only with us as long as I can keep her interested in me, because we know that, what is the solution to that problem? Well, simple, you just fucking rotate them out. Okay, okay, you go through one every three months. Okay, you get a new one. Okay, that, that's what you do. Okay, and before you start fucking judging me, that's what women do too. That's what women do too. Okay, you just rotate them out. Okay, don't burn any bridges. You don't have to do that. You don't, you don't have to fucking catch feelings and shit and get all fucking butt hurt. Okay, uh, on both sides, I say that. Okay, because um, you know, you never know when you're going to fucking need, a, need a, an emergency fuck. All right. So you don't want to burn any bridges or anything, but you got to keep the rotation going, okay? Unless, unless this girl is the one that you fucking really can see yourself with, okay? 
But a girl like that, you're going to have to fucking earn. Because just like, you know, women, you know, they don't want to be fucking, uh, they want to be picked. They want a high value man to pick them. Okay. But women also want the guy to be worthy of them. Okay, it means he has to meet all these criteria. Okay, well, guess what, bitch? Okay, you got to meet our criteria too. Okay, I know that's the part they never talk about in chick flicks. Okay, but you actually got to meet our criteria too. Okay, and you never see any anyone sweating about any guy sweating about that in these movies, but you always see the girls sweating about it, don't you? Of course you do. All right. Uh, so, um, yeah. So I mean, if, if both of you fucking meet the criteria for each other, then yeah, absolutely, you don't want to let that go. You don't want to, man. I mean, I know what that's like. I know what it's like to fucking be in love with somebody. All right. And know that person is in love with you, too. I mean, it's a great fucking feeling. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. Probably one of the best feelings in the world. Okay. And you don't definitely want to let that go. But what I'm saying is that most of your experiences are not going to be like that. Okay. So you got to look at this realistically. Get your fucking feelings out of it. Okay. Um, so I say that to you guys out there watching this and you girls out there watching this. Okay. It has nothing to fucking to do with what's, what's up here. It's all about what's in here. That's the way girls look at things, okay? What fucking turns them on? What makes them feel great? That's the guy they're going to get with. It doesn't matter if he's, like I said, it doesn't matter if he fucking works at McDonald's, if he's a fucking, if he fucking bought Tinder, or if he fucking, you know, is a serial killer. It doesn't fucking matter. The guy, the guy that turns her on, okay, is the, is the, is the guy that's fucking, she's going to be attracted to. That's the one she's going to want to stay with, all right? So all this shit about you have to be a nice guy, you know, and open doors for girls. I'm like, get the fuck out of here, okay? Do you think fucking Harry Styles is to open a fucking door for anyone to impress a girl? No, he fucking doesn't, okay? Get the fuck out of here. All right, moving right along. And for those of you women out there that are mad about what I said, let me tell you something. One more thing, okay? There's a hell of a lot more of you than there is the fucking Harry Styles and the fucking Marcus Grahams of the world, okay? There's a hell of a lot more of you than there is of them, okay? So, you need to understand that. Okay, <laughs> but despite the fact that uh, Eddie Murphy is the main character in this movie, th this movie was an ego boost for him. It was just a way to, for him to market himself to women. Now we already knew that Eddie Murphy got laid a lot. Okay, we already knew that he didn't really do rom coms before this or anything like that. He played. He was in, he was in action comedies. Okay, like Forty Eight Hours. Okay, and like um, and, and coming to America was uh, that was kind of romantic, but it was mostly a comedy about an immigrant. You know. Um, and also like like Beverly Hills Cop, which is action action comedy. Okay, so that's what he was known for. Okay, this was his opportunity to do like a straight up rom com. Okay, this is all. It's not about action. It's not about nobody's getting shot here. Okay, um, there's no drug dealers, no criminals, no one's going to jail. None of that shit's happening here. Okay, um, and, and this one basically it's about a love life. It's about ex sexual experiences. Okay, now obviously Eddie Murphy, you know, he's trying to to branch out to other genres. He's trying to do rom coms now, and that's what this movie was. Okay, it was a rom com because he wants to be a fucking leading man, not just in action comedies, but also in you know romantic uh, and eventually dramas. He wants to do drama. Remember when he wanted to be a fucking singer? Remember that? Remember when Eddie Murphy wanted to be a fucking singer? Just put your mouth on me. Boop, boop. Yeah, he was trying to do a lot of things, okay? And this was him trying to be a fucking a Hugh Grant, okay? Trying to be a fucking rom-com actor, okay? <laughs> and I don't think he really did too many rom-coms, all right? And I honestly, I, I'm going to have to look it up. I don't know how well this movie did uh, when it first came out, but I do remember that I liked it a lot, okay? I, I'm going to have to do some research on this and find out how it did as far. I, I know they made a TV show based on this, and I guess um, uh, fucking Marcus and Angela had a had a daughter or a son or some shit who's in the tv show and the tv show lasted like two seasons or something but fucking i don't know i never watched it i'm not gonna watch, i'm not gonna watch it okay <laughs> it's not the original i love the original i'm not gonna fucking invest into a fucking knockoff literally a knockoff no no thanks all right uh but i will have to check to see how this movie did at the box office okay uh, but i do know that eddie murphy didn't really do any romantic comedies after this none that i can think of if i'm wrong let me know i know there was the golden child but i don't think that one was it all right, uh, but I don't think he really did any rom-coms after this. Nothing that was successful anyway. Okay, this is the only rom-com that I know he did. That was strictly a rom-com, all right? Uh, and I liked it a lot, but, you know, I understand. Most people don't like it. Uh, rom-coms, usually, it's the woman that's the main character. All right, moving right along. Where did we leave off last time? Okay, we left off last time. Uh, finally, Marcus got to fuck uh, Jacqueline, his boss, Robin Givens. Yes, Mrs. Mike Tyson herself. Okay, uh, he finally got to fuck her. Uh, I think she was just horny. They were in New Orleans together. Uh, he had a fucking room across from her. 
he pretended that he couldn't open his, his room door. <laughs> his key didn't work to his room, so she just invited him into hers, and they started fucking. Uh, you know, he's been trying to hit it for a while now. He, he, he made his intentions known very early on. when he Before he even knew that she was his boss, he was already trying to hit it. Okay, he, he flirted with her the first time he ever saw her. Okay, and he never stopped. Even after he found out that, that she's his boss and all this shit, you know, even after that, even after she talked down to him, even after she fucking emasculated him, even after she, like, you know, told him it's never going to happen, uh, he's still flirting with her. Okay, and I think what the movie's trying to tell you is that because she resists his advances, uh, because she doesn't fucking kiss the, kiss him the first time they meet. She doesn't fuck him the first time they meet. Okay, she kind of keeps him at a distance. Okay, usually women uh, they they succumb to him pretty quickly, but this girl's not doing that. So because of that, he's more excited by her. He's he's falling in love with her because she doesn't just give it up right away. And there is some truth set to that. Okay, guys, you don't want to fall in love with a girl that fucks you on the first the first time you guys go out. Okay, because I guarantee you, you're not the first one. She's fucked the first time she went out with him, and you're not going to be the last, all right? So is that really the kind of girl you, you'll want to be with? But at the same time, you don't want to be with a girl, catch feelings from a girl that you're always going out with, and then not have sex with her. Okay, when you know for a fact that she's been fucking other guys. Okay, other guys didn't have to wait fucking five days to get laid. Okay, but you, but you, here you are on your sixth date and you haven't gotten laid yet, dude. You are a free fucking dinner. Okay, you're a free movies. That's what you are. Okay, you gotta fucking kick her to the curb. She ain't into you. Quit spending your fucking money on her. All right, uh, you see what I mean? So we, so we have to fall in between them. We gotta find that balance in between those two uh, situations there. Okay, and she's doing that. Okay, she's flirting with him, but she's also not sleeping with him. Okay, so it's kind of like you know, I can understand why he's why he's turned on to her. I don't understand why he's falling in love with her. That I don't understand. Okay. Um, he, I mean, it's not just her. Yes, she's a beautiful girl. The movie plays up the fact that how hot she is with, you know, she wears the tight pants, you know, they do the double take with her hair swinging back and shit like that. So they're playing up that she's fucking gorgeous. We get that. Okay. But all the women in this movie are gorgeous. Grace Jones is gorgeous. Tisha Campbell is gorgeous. Halle Berry is gorgeous. Okay, even fucking, even Eartha Kitt looks good for her age. I mean, she's like in her 60s, but for, for a woman who's in her 60s, she looks decent. Okay, I wouldn't call her gorgeous anymore, but she looks decent for her age. Hey, she does. Lila Rasha looks gorgeous in this movie too. So any, any these women are all interchangeable. Okay, so I mean, you know, what is it, what I'm trying to find, what is it about her that would make, you, make him fall in love? So if I use my own personal experience into this, like why would I fall in love with her? Okay, the, the only thing I can see Besides the fact that she's beautiful, okay, but you know, I, I've never, I've never really fallen in love with a girl that wasn't beautiful, though. So you know, what the hell, okay? <laughs> the, the, despite the fact that she's beautiful, Marcus, uh, he only fucks beautiful girls, like, well, like, unless fucking it's Lady Eloise, but he, he thought he had to do that, okay? <laughs> okay, but all right. So, um, why, if I was Marcus, why would I fall in love with Jacqueline? Okay, well, is it because she's my boss? No, I wouldn't fall in love with my boss. Okay, uh, but I would pursue her. I would try to fuck her. Uh, because, you know, when you're fucking the boss, you get French benefits. Yes, ladies, it works for us, too. Okay? <laughs> yes. <laughs> we learned it from you, ladies. We learned it from you. If you're fucking the boss, uh, you do get French benefits. You get better treatment. And yes, I talk from experience. Okay? Uh, so I can see him pursuing her for that reason. But that, that's not the reason they're giving us in this movie. They're giving He's, like, legitimately falling in love with her. And it's not because her feet are perfect, either. Okay? That's just a bullshit excuse in this movie. Uh, why is he falling in love with her? I think probably because... She made him wait to have sex. She didn't succumb to him right away, which means that she has a she places a higher priority on who she has sex with. She didn't just fucking give it up right away, okay? Which is a good thing. That is, that is fucking girlfriend material right there, okay? And like I said, there is an exception to that rule. The exception is like, well, you know, if you know, if I'm in love with this girl, okay, and every time we go out, she will not have sex with me. But I know for a fact that she already fucked like three other guys that I know. And they didn't have to wait as long as, as I'm waiting, okay? Then I know she's full of shit. I can't, I'm not going to see her anymore. So I wouldn't fall in love with her, okay? You see what I mean? <laughs> but that's not happening here. So um, so why is he? I don't know. I don't know why he's in love with her. Why is he falling in love with her? She's smart, but there's lots of smart girls that he fucked. What the hell? I mean, she's above him, but he doesn't give a shit that she's a super. He's not trying to. He's not trying to to, to have sex to fall to have sex with her just so he can get fucking perks at work. Okay, I'm not, I mean, I mean, he's expecting that. But that's not that's not his goal. He's not trying to fucking replace her by seducing her and then getting her fired and then taking her job. No, he's not trying to do that either. So what the fuck is it? You see what I mean? I, I don't I don't know. I don't know what makes her so special. Okay, uh, she doesn't laugh at his jokes. Okay, she doesn't fucking. She's not interested in his cooking, the stuff that he usually uses. Okay, that would actually turn me off. 
if uh, you know, if here I, if I made this meal for a girl, I took my time to make a meal for a girl. Yes, I made it over and over again, and every guy give it to every girl that I bring back to my place, and every girl likes it. Blah blah. Okay, but here's this one girl who doesn't like it, doesn't compliment me on it. I'm like, oh, what the fuck am I trying so hard for this girl? She doesn't give a shit about me. Okay. Then I would revert to the original reason I'd be trying to fuck her. Well, because she's my boss, okay? It'll help me out a lot at work if I'm fucking the boss. So I'm still going to pursue her, but I'm also going to pursue other girls as well, is what I'm trying to say. I'm not just going to put all my eggs in one basket and expect her to fall in love with me. But that's what Marcus is doing. And, he's, and you're supposed to convince me that he's a player in this movie? No, a player doesn't do that. A player doesn't just immediately give up all the girls that he's pursuing just to be with one, okay? Unless, unless he really knows this girl. Okay, now if you spent some time with her, you've been working with her for a year, she's always there, she's always got his back, uh, he, he knows enough about her to know what her character is like, you know, that kind of thing, you know, then I could see himself falling in love with every girl that I fell in love with, I, I didn't fall in love with them right away, I, there's women I was attracted to right away, absolutely, okay, but as far as falling in love with somebody, I've only fallen in love with girls that I knew, that I knew them over time, okay, like we slowly started knowing each other. Okay, I started learning things about her that I didn't expect. She started learning things about me that she didn't expect. That kind of thing, you know. And I mean, it's in a good way. Okay, that's how, with the exception of high school, that doesn't count. Okay, but you, you see what I mean? Okay, but he hasn't done that with her. He's, he is learning things about her, but nothing that's going to tell him, hey, listen, you know, um, she feels the same way for you as you felt her. In fact, he's getting the opposite signals. He's getting the fucking, uh, she doesn't really give a shit about your cooking. Uh, you know, she doesn't give a shit about R&B music. She just wants to watch the fucking basketball game. Okay, you know, you see what I mean? That kind of thing. So that would turn me off. To, uh, that would dissuade me from hitting on her anymore. You see what I mean? But Marcus, it just it just turns them on even more because they want women watch this movie to think that that's how you get a guy by playing hard to get. That's going to make the guy fall. You know, it's not. It's not. Okay, like I said, you got to find that balance. It's not easy. You got to find that balance between, you know, a girl who's just using you for free fucking dinners, free movies, or a girl that's just going to give it up to you right away. Okay. Because that's a girl that has very little value on, on her body, okay? Uh, whereas another one is just fucking using you. doesn't care about you, but she's using you to make you think she cares. You see what I mean? So you got to find the girl that's in between those things. You see what I mean? That That's the hard part. It's not easy. I'm not saying it's easy. All right. But the movie's not doing the hard work. It's just giving you, the, oh, yeah, he's in love with her. Okay, we're just supposed to go with it. Okay, <laughs> whatever. All right. So he's bragging about that. Okay, there's a, there's a situation at a clothing store, a men's clothing store. It's a racist situation. The, the guy, uh, even though, which is bullshit, it would never happen in real life, okay? Uh, but you've got Marcus there with his buddies, Tyler and Gerard, played by uh, Martin Lawrence and David Allen Greer, respectively. Okay, and they're both they're both rich. I mean, they're not, they're not as rich as Marcus, okay? But they work in the same building, okay? They wear suits every day, okay? So they're making good jobs. They went to college, obviously. They're making good jobs. These are white-collar jobs. And they're in a clothing store, and this white salesman, uh, confronts them and goes like, uh, sir, that, that, that suit is $1,800. Perhaps you would, uh, like a more economical option or that kind of shit, you know, just being a racist asshole. They always show this in movies all the time. I remember they did that in Selena. I remember that one with JLo. Okay. Where the rich white girl, woman that works at the store goes like, oh, that dress is $15,000. You know, you can't afford it. You're just a fucking, you're just a fucking, uh, uh you know, Latina. Okay. I want to say a bad word, but I ain't going to, I ain't going to say a bad word about my own kind. Okay. Uh, you see what I mean? And they did, they, they did, they did that in pretty woman too. The street hooker walked into that fucking nice store. Okay, on Rodeo Drive, and they fucking treated her like shit because they knew she was a fucking prostitute. She couldn't afford any of the clothes that were in there. Okay, so they always do that. Okay, and they're doing that here. Okay, so um, Marcus actually, I mean, now, now Tyler, of course, Martin was like, what the, did you see that? That's your racism. That is racism. You know, like Martin was all puffing himself up and shit, doing this shit with his hands all the time. You know, this little fucking black guy, you know, fucking Gary Coleman looking motherfucker trying to act all big and bad. It's funny, but <laughs> it doesn't really work. Marcus actually handles the situation. Like, oh, no, we're going to leave by, you know, that kind of thing. And then he scares the white guy by going like, Aah! like he screams in his ear. And the guy's like, ah, ah, we don't have any money. We don't give any money in the dresses. Or, ah, you know, that kind of shit, you know. They just put that in there to put it in there. All right. Anyway, which is weird because like all the, all the white people in this movie, um, they're all like economically lower class than all the black people in this movie. The only white people we see in this movie are like, like I said, this guy, the salesman at a clothing. I'm guarantee you, Marcus, Tyler, and Gerard all make more money than he does. Okay, and then you have that waitress in the restaurant, the white waitress. Okay, uh, you know those guys make a lot more money than she does. 
So the, the, the white guys in this people are, are kind of given like a lower status, okay, in this movie. Now, I know some of you are excited and happy about that. Oh, it's about time, okay? But then you got to remember this movie was written by two white guys, two Jewish white guys, okay? So, I mean, if you're trying to fucking, and I'm sure they got well paid for it. Okay, uh, so you, you're not striking a blow against anything. This is just bullshit. Bullshit progressiveness. Okay, the same shit they're doing today. All this fucking, you know, fucking hate white people shit is, is, is a cool thing to do. You know, I mean, who's in charge of that shit, white people? They sold you your own victimhood. Okay, <laughs> you see what I mean? <laughs> There's nothing more racist to me than the fucking white savior. Okay, and y'all know what I'm talking about, the white savior. Okay, every fucking movie that deals with racism, there's always one white guy or one white girl that's on the side of the black person. Okay? To prove that I ain't like them. You know, I don't care about that stuff. I don't care about the color of your skin. You know, that kind of shit. That's every fucking Hollywood movie for the past 15 years. It's always got to be the white savior. <laughs> I'm not like them. <laughs> Absolutely, fucking lootly. Am I right? Am I right? Okay. Uh, so moving right along. Okay, so that's going on here. Uh, those guys are too well-dressed uh, to look like they're fucking going to try to rob the store or anything like that. That's just bullshit. Okay. Uh, so like I said, Tyler does this little thing. Move on to the next scene. Angela and Jacqueline, uh, they go over her artwork. They have a little meeting in her office. She's showing her uh, artwork. She's an art director for the company. Angela is Halle Berry's character. The sweet, nice, lovable one. Unfortunately, she wears baggy clothes all the time. With stupid ass prints on there, you know, uh, so you cannot see her body. Whereas Jacqueline wears these tight fitting business outfits, you know, skirts and she has yes, girls used to wear skirts back in the day. All right, uh, very sexy. Okay, whereas Angela wears very baggy clothes. I mean, it, it looks ridiculous. I can understand it's work, you know, but you know, she's too beautiful to cover up her body that way. Okay, but I know why they did it. They did it because they want you to fucking, uh, she's a sweet girl. You know, whenever they have the nerd girl in these fucking, it's always a hot girl, but you put baggy clothes on her, put a ponytail and some glasses, and we're supposed to believe that she's a nerdy girl and can't get a guy. Get the fuck out of here, okay? Well, that's what they're doing here. Okay, they're trying to they're trying to show you at this point in the movie, they're trying to show you how fucking Jacqueline is so much sexier, okay, and more sophisticated than Angela is. Hence, that's going to feed into Angela's low self-esteem, Okay, uh, that way you feel sorry for Angela, which means that you actually want Angela, the nice girl, to get with Marcus. Okay, this movie's trying to tell you uh, that nice girls finish, uh, that nice girls finish first. Okay, and bad girls finish last, <laughs> when it's actually the opposite. <laughs> when for men, it's the opposite. Nice guys do finish last, and bad boys finish first. It's true, it's true. Okay, unfortunately, but it's true, okay? Uh, don't shoot the messenger, okay? And so that's what they're trying to do. So they're playing it up on purpose, okay? Uh, so they're going over the artwork. And, of course, what do women do uh, when they're by themselves talking about work? They start talking about guys, all right? And Jacqueline says, like, you know, uh, she's like, oh, so I heard you and Marcus, you know? <laughs> of course, I'm sure everybody knows now because he bragged about it. Okay, he did. He bragged to all his friends about it, all right? Uh, so Jacqueline's like, yo, he, you know what? Marcus, he's wonderful, magnificent, and girl, he has got the best ass I have ever seen. Well, so you've seen a lot of asses, huh? <laughs> uh, no, I'm pretty sure uh, Robin Givens has seen a lot of fucking cheeks in her time, okay? I'm sure she's seen a lot. I'm not saying that Eddie Murphy has a has an ugly ass. I don't fucking know. I never really looked at it, okay? <laughs> but I'm pretty sure she's seen nice nicer asses than his okay i'm sure he's, she's actually gone out with guys to do squats and shit right? <laughs> just throw a quarter against that butt boom bounce it off Woo. you know you could fucking sit on it <laughs> hey yeah yeah no whatever i don't fucking know dude you know i'm too old for that shit Okay, when I was in high school, that's all girls ever talked about was fucking guys' asses. That's all they ever fucking talked about. Okay, oh, look at his ass. They would judge guys on their ass and shit. That's all they ever fucking did. Okay, it was all about the guy's ass. Like, whatever happened to that? Okay, this is the 90s. This is back when it was going on, 92. This is perfect time. Okay? You always had guys showing off their ass. Guys like fucking Van Damme and fucking Schwarzenegger and Stallone were all showing their asses off in movies. 
you know, Kurt Russell, they were all fucking showing their ass in movies. That was like the thing to do, you know? Like, what the fuck, man? They don't do that anymore. And I don't know why. They just don't do that anymore, okay? Uh, uh, actually, uh, guys are still actually getting more naked now in movies than, than women are. Women don't show anything anymore, okay? They used to, back then, it was the other way around. Women showed their shit, and guys didn't. Now it's the other one. Now guys are fucking doing full frontal, and the girls are always having fucking their, their tits covered up and their, and their bush covered up in movies. And what the fuck happened? Exactly. Okay. Anyway, uh, that's progressivism for you. All right. But anyway, yeah, so she says that's the best ass here. I, I don't think so, but what the fuck? And they, they wrote it in here for, for a reason, okay? Uh, you know, now this turns women on, uh, but it turns guys off, okay? You know, um, it does. It does. It turns guys off, okay? Uh, when women talk this way, Okay, um, uh, it, it just does, it just does, all right. So, um, uh, yeah, so Marcus uh, walks in, okay, and suspects that they're talking about him, okay? And of course they act like they're not. Oh no, we're just going over our artwork here, we're just doing work, you know, that kind of thing, all right? And he tells Angela uh, that Gerard, he's like, oh, you know, you're acting all funny here, Angela. I'm, I'm, uh, Gerard must have hit it, didn't he? He hit it, didn't he? He hit it, okay? Because he fixed her up with Gerard, Dale and Grisker, the beta male, uh, yeah. Uh, they, he fixed them up together on a date, okay, which they went on a date, but there's no chemistry, no nothing, no kiss. I mean, not, not much of a kiss, okay? She's not attracted to him at all. He's a fucking, he's, he's a beta male. He's a pussy, okay? He's trying to get in touch with his feminine side, okay? No masculinity at all, no testosterone at all with him, okay? He's a fucking pussy, and she doesn't want to go out with a pussy because she's not a fucking lesbian, all right? But anyway, but Mark is going like, oh, Gerard hit it, didn't he? He hit it, okay? And then uh, she says, Gerard could not hit it if he had a bat. Okay, because obviously she doesn't like Gerard, okay? She likes him. She likes Marcus. It's pretty obvious. That's why she wanted to know how good he was in bed. That's why she wanted to know uh, what he's like, you know, uh, you know, from, from Jack Limp, because she wants, to, she wants him to be pre-qualified. Now, she was already attracted to him, but she doesn't know anyone that fucked him. Okay, but now she does. Now she knows Jacqueline. Jacqueline fucked him. Okay, so now she knows he's a good lay. Okay, and yes, guys, women do this. Okay. If you want, if you want to be the most popular guy in, in your dating pool, okay, find one girl, fuck her, fuck her great, okay. She will tell all the other girls. The next thing you know, you're not gonna be hurting for dates anymore, okay. It's true. I know it's not fair. I know a lot of you nice guys out there are really pissed off that I said that, but it's fucking true. I didn't fucking make the rules, okay. I know I piss off women whenever I'm talking this way, okay, but I piss off just as so many guys too, all right. I know, all right, but it's still fucking true, okay. The truth hurts, but it's true, okay. Yeah, you want if you want to get fucking laid, okay. Find one girl that has a lot of girlfriends and fuck her really well. It's just like fucking Empire Carpets, okay? It's just like carpet, okay? You lay it down good once, you can walk on it forever. It's true. She will tell all the other girls uh, what a good fucking lay you are. The next thing you know, boom, okay, you're fucking getting fucking slipped uh, DMs all the fucking time. All right? Okay, moving right along. Okay, so that's going on here. Okay, Marcus wants to get, to get cozy with Jacqueline right there at work. Uh, she declines, okay? She doesn't want any PDA, any uh, public displays of affection, okay? At work, she doesn't want, she wants to be professional at work. She wants to be all lovey-dovey, hugging each other, tickling each other and shit, making out at work, okay? She wants to keep it professional because, I mean, she is a supervisor, okay? Okay, and New Orleans, okay? She says, what happened in New Orleans stays in New Orleans, okay? She doesn't want to go through that again, all right? Okay, so he gets uh, nervous and says that he's willing to take things slow, Okay, he's willing to fucking not 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 jump into this thing that fast, you know. Okay, there's no pressure. Okay, he's not he's not proposing to her marriage or anything like that. Okay, okay, and she tells him, well, you know what? She he just wants to know when they can go out again. And she's like, you know, I'll, I'll get back to you. I'll get back to you on that. <laughs> As to when she can see him again. Okay, he's like, well, well, you didn't have a good time in New Orleans. He goes, Marcus, you know, I had a good time in New Orleans. But uh, I'm busy with other things right now. So, you know, that kind of thing, okay? You know, um, so, you know, so now he's sweating by the phone. He's waiting for her to call, okay? So we see him sitting there in his office, okay? There's a big portrait of Lady Eloise. I guess Lady Eloise is blowing up his fucking phone. She's trying to fuck him again, even though she's old and unattractive, okay? I mean, for, I mean she's like 60-something years old, okay? Uh, it, yeah, so he's waiting there by the phone, waiting for her to call him. Okay, uh, he waits by the phone for her to, for her to call him. Okay, okay, and he finally gets a phone call from her from uh, her secretary, who's a guy, and tells him that it'll be three weeks before she can see him again. Okay, and he's like, three weeks? Okay, I'll take it. Okay, like he'll take it. Okay, mistake mistake right there. Don't ever fucking do that. Don't ever. You are not fucking available 
at her beck and call. Okay, three fucking weeks. Are you in a fucking mind? Who the fuck? You might not even be alive in three weeks. Who the fuck knows what's going to happen in three weeks? The world could end in three fucking weeks. Okay, why the fuck are you promising you're going to be there in three fucking weeks? Okay, this isn't some fucking work uh, fucking seminar or some shit. Okay, it's not some conference you have to go to. Okay, uh, it, it's a fucking date. And you're going to wait three weeks? Get the fuck out of here. Sorry, I'm not available in three weeks. Okay, and like I said before, uh, realistically, he would be dating uh, other people. He would. She's ba she's practically telling him to go fucking date other women. Don't put all your th all your energy onto me. Okay, because I'm not going to put all my energy into you. All right, he, she's basically telling him go date other guys, other girls. I don't have time for you right now. Okay, you should go date other girls, but he's not doing it. He's supposed to be a fucking player. This is the rule. This is the shit you learn in fucking basic fucking uh. Uh, a player fucking school or whatever, okay? Player number one on one. You never date just one fucking girl. There's no one and only hope, okay? She never told. She never told him that that she wanted something exclusive. That she was falling in love with. Him. She never said that. But he's acting like it, like that's the case, and it's bullshit. That's why I don't believe it. All right. So anyway, so but but yes, he's pissed off. He's got to wait three weeks, but he, he agrees to it, okay? Uh, like I said, realistically, he would be fucking other women women right now. He wouldn't have waited. For her, for this fucking date, while he's waiting, uh, he would be fucking other girls. Okay, okay, he's not, he's not, uh, he, he, he's not forced into loneliness. He's not forced into being alone and jerking off all the time. He can fucking date other girls. There's nothing stopping him from doing it. You see what I mean? But this movie wants you to think that he's so fucking in love with fucking um, with with Jacqueline that he's not going to date any girls because because he feels like he would be cheating on her if he did. Bull fucking shit. The movie just wants you to think that, guys. Okay, this is the shit. This is the reason fucking there's so many beta males out there. So many weak men. Weak men watch this shit and think this is what you're supposed to do. When a girl's blowing you off, you're supposed to fucking be faithful to her and just wait for her until she's ready for. Get the fuck out of here. No, you go go fucking get your own. Get your fucking own. Okay, if she's yours, she'll be she'll still be there later on. Okay, okay, but you have the right to fucking go get your fucking nut. Go get your nut busted. All right, and it doesn't have to be with fucking her. Like I said, he didn't put a ring on it. And, and the Marcus is a player. He should already know this. He should be sweating her. Okay, he should be dating other women. Like, what the fuck? But he feels bad. Like, that'll be a wrong thing to know. It's not. It's the right thing to do. Okay, there's a time and place for everything. Okay? And right now, okay, if he's going through this, uh, what he needs to be doing is dating other girls. It's fucking other girls. Okay? Again, you want some, you get some good fucking schmoo, and fucking, he's not gonna be thinking about her nearly as much as he is right now. Okay, but unfortunately, most guys don't do that. But Marcus is not most guys. He's the guy that should be doing that. He's the guy that should be teaching other guys how to do that. Okay, he's he's the fuck. He should be the Andrew Tate. He should be fucking giving the, the advice. Okay, instead, he's just fucking being a pussy. He's crying over her. He's conflicted. He feels insecure now. Maybe he's not good enough for her. Oh my God, what if I lose her? Get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here. Now, if you want me to believe that, that, that this would happen to him, I, I can believe it if he was a normal guy, but he's not. He's a fucking player. He's a player. He shouldn't be going through it. He should have gone through this shit years ago and learned how to fucking overcome it so that he doesn't get hit with it again. Okay? But now he's acting like a fucking amateur. No, this ain't how it's done. Dude, it's not how it's fucking done. I know why he did it. He did it because he wanted the women to get on his side. He wanted the women to feel sorry for him. Okay? Feel sorry for the guys that fuck you over. <laughs> See what I mean? See how he's trying to manipulate the audience? Okay? Marcus is the guy that would fuck you over. But now he's trying to make himself the main character and feel sorry for him. See what I mean? Oh, Marcus. Oh, don't worry. She'll come back. No, no, no. Fuck that. If you're a guy, hey, Marcus, quit fucking crying about this fucking bitch. Go get fucking laid right now. Go fuck another girl right now. Your neighbor's there. Go fuck her. Come on. You're waiting for her. If she's yours, she'll still be there. She already knows you fucked Lady Eloise, and she don't care. So what the fuck? <laughs> fuck her. <laughs> fuck another girl. She ain't gonna hold it against you. <laughs> it's true, she's not. She's not. Okay. All right, I'm gonna stop my review right here, but I'll be back shortly to continue my review of Boomerang. I thank you very much for watching this long, and I'll see you soon on the next one. Bye.